Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report. Today it's Thursday, January 31st, 2013. I'm Darko, my website's ggnonline.com and on YouTube, ddarko2012 and ddarko2013 on my YouTube channels. All right, I'm ready to go here in Mali, forces backed by the UN, France, and Obama slaughter civilians. So uh, moving on here, we have 12 civilians slain in French attack on Mali, town of Kona. Locals detail deaths and airstrikes, machine gun fire, so it goes on here, it says that much of Kona was destroyed in the seemingly random attacks and helicopter gunships were poorly attacked and killed a family of four who were preparing food in their courtyard of their home. All told, at least 12 uh, civilians were killed all by French forces. Officials shrugged off the desk saying mistakes happen and insisting that the slain would hold no ill will towards the French for retaking their town or at least what is left of it from the rebels. We have West imposes media blackout on Mali war. It says, I've heard of stories of the media blackout, and this is extremely undesirable because it means, therefore, uh, that we don't really know. We don't have independent journalists letting us know what is happening. Either we know nothing or we don't know if what we are being told is lies. So he says, right now it's a terrible situation. Pressure has to be put on the French to stop it. And this was Mr. Akueta, or African policy analyst so in Washington. EU ready to help Mali to rebuild its army. I already covered this yesterday at the end of my uh, reports there. The European Union has a vital role to play in rebuilding the Malian army. Why? I don't know. But it says here, U.S. may give $32 million to train African troops in Mali. So the Obama administration is seeking an additional $32 million to train African troops to fight Islamic extremists in Mali. The U.S. is not providing any direct aid to the Malian government because the democratically elected president was overthrown in a coup last year, some say actually by the United States, because they didn't like that they actually elected their own go uh, government or president. So they're going to fund it uh, to the French mission, that's what they're saying. So it goes on here, it says, however, been providing aid to the French-led mission, transporting French troops and equipment to Mali. Then, uh, then we have, here comes the drones are the true reason for the Mali incursion. It goes on here and it says, given our recent discussion on the recent importance of Africa and the world's power and money echelons, it's not entirely surprising that the New York Times reports that the U.S. military command in Africa, or AFRICOM and that, is actively preparing to establish a drone base in Northwest Africa to increase unarmed surveillance uh, missions on the local affiliate of Al-Qaeda. This is directly re related to the Mali mission, but it could also give AFRICOM a more enduring presence for ISR, one American military official said Sunday, referring to intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Perhaps, actually, scratch the perhaps, what is really happening is the U.S. Uh, now has a drone base with which to supervise China expansion in northwest, uh, or northeast, sorry, northwest and east, maybe. Africa and a drone fleet to use defensively and offensively as it sees fit, like in Somalia, where they actually drone bomb, uh, you know, kill people if they think they're Al Shabaab. Says if the base is approved, the most likely location for it would be Niger. So that article was from the 28th, like I said, and uh, January 29th, Niger gives green light to U.S. drone deployment. They give permission for the U.S. surveillance drones to be stationed on its territory to improve intelligence on the Al Qaeda linked Islamist fighters in northern Mali and wider Sahara. France sends troops to secure Niger uranium mines from the 25th, barely two weeks after invading Mali with over 2,000 troops of foreign legion. France has dispatched special forces troops to neighboring Niger to secure uranium mines run by the French state-owned nuclear power company. Pretty interesting, too. Uh, there's, I've seen two different articles and videos about France deploying special forces. Uh, I think it was through Europe uh, over this uh, possible um, threat of a terrorist attack. Yeah, and a separate article saying that Al-Qaeda was going to strike again, kind of like a 9-11 type thing. Uh, but it said it would be Lone Wolf or, or something like that, uh, basically against Western Western countries. And so there's they're basically setting uh, setting the, the precedence here or just the background for for a future uh, false flag attack, if you want to call it that, because it's where that term is used a lot, whatever that may mean. And of course, you have after them doing what they're doing in Africa, UK, specific threat to Westerners in Somaliland. They said the same thing about Libya as well. British citizens should immediately leave the breakaway Somaliland region of Somalia because of a specific threat to Westerners. So they probably know something. We just covered an article about Obama and uh, government officials and stuff like that. Uh, it's basically saying that they're concerned about Obama getting taken out by a drone strike. 
It says, France's President uh, Holland is afraid of his military high command, security services, fear of a military attempt on the life of the President. Nicolas Sarkozy and Holland used the French armies to pander to private or foreign interests. They sent men to their death to plunder Ivory Coast, Coco, Libya's gold reserves, Syria's gas, and Mali's uranium. The trust is broken between the military chiefs and the soldiers who are in the army to defend the homeland. Speaking of drones set for takeoff, Britain's deadly super drone that picks its own targets but experts warn plane could mark the start of robot wars. Revolutionary super drone could spearhead fight against terrorism in Africa. Uh, experts warned it raised a nightmare of out of control robots waging war on humans. It's named after the Celtic god of thunder, uh, can fly faster than the speed of sound and evades enemy radar with a single wing stealth design. This is uh, Tyrannus, sorry if I didn't pronounce that right, uh, but it says Britain's latest pilotless combat aircraft, which is even capable of selecting its own targets. The super drone is to make its maiden flight in the next few weeks and could spearhead the fight against terrorism in Africa. I think, man, this is their big, I guess this is their new theater. I kept hearing about the Asia pivot and all that. But apparently, with all the mainstream media uh, uh, build-up for this, you know, Africa, 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 now, I mean, this must have been in the wings waiting for months, if not years. So it takes off, whatever, uh, by, and it says it's a pre-programmed flight path, uh, but it says here, target identification, it can select its own targets, but final kill decisions will be taken by the mission commander. So that's what I was talking about before, about... The, uh, the powers that be, they like these all these robots and like to move to a more drone type uh, a, a military because you know humans like we were just talking about in France, you know they uh, they don't they don't like being complete pawns I guess you could say. Eventually they're going to catch on to what they're being used for and then they'll kind of kind of rebel. So they like machines because they don't ask questions, uh, they don't get their legs blown off, and then you got to do all the health care and benefits and stuff like that. But with robots, they just kill, you know, without questions. And that's why they're trying to make all these uh, super soldiers. So the future is going to be like military, and then you're going to have these kind of quasi-cyborg, you know, quasi-human cyborgs, right? Um, where they'll be kind of half uh, computers and robots, and then they'll be half human. And, of course, the thing is they want to be able to, to uh, remotely, you know, usually that's what it is, remotely, um, or embed some kind of programming, but they're going to actually still answer to the humans. Now, that's where the whole thing of singularity comes into play, where they're eventually going to, you know, remember the Russian scientist or the Russian that was talking about, you know, this is going to, this whole thing of singularity is going to go badly for humans. So, but then you have this. It's not my belief that an unmanned system will be able to perfectly ethical, uh, be perfectly ethical in the battlefield, but I'm convinced that they can perform more ethically than human soldiers are capable of. Ronald Arkin, Georgia Institute of Technology. He's talking about autonomous drones. There is fundamentally, there is a fundamentally anti-human belief that we can program an ethical machine that will coldly evaluate a situation and always make the right choice. Unlike these icky meat sacks and their faulty programming, humans in this evaluation are just bad code. Remove them from the loop and all will be well. DARPA shows off a 1.8 gigapixel surveillance drone and can spot a terrorist from 20,000 feet. DARPA and the U.S. Army have taken the wraps off this Argus, uh, is, I guess, whatever you would pronounce that, a platform that can resolve details as small as 6 inches from an altitude of 20,000 feet the highest resolution surveillance platform in the world and probably the highest resolution camera in the world so you know that should be good right it would be attached to some kind of unmanned uav such as a predator drone so you know then uh, then this won't happen right predator drone strikes 50 civilians are killed for every one terrorist so that way uh, you know this could actually be you know these people might actually appreciate that so instead of having to kill uh, 49 uh, people innocent people uh, to get one terrorist, you know, they could just kill one of the terrorists that they want to get. So, <laughs> I'm being sarcastic, of course. From January 28th, uh, PBS drone coverage brought to you by the makers. So, Lockheed's Nova sponsorship violates underwriting rules. The PBS Nova broadcast Rise of the Drones was sponsored by a drone manufacturer, Lockheed Martin, a clear violation of PBS's underwriting guidelines. On January 23rd, broadcast was a mostly upbeat look at surveillance and weaponized drones saying, discover the cutting edge technologies that are propelling us towards a new chapter in aviation history. The PBS urged, promising to reveal the amazing technologies that make drones so powerful. 
So, so I'm going to leave off here, guys, and I'm going to continue on the third video and just start fresh. So, this is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.